Do you want to start with a really weird whiskey that's gonna ruin everything, or do you want to end it with that weird one that ends everything, ruins everything? The first one you said. The first one? Yes. You want to end with something that ruins everything? Yeah. Okay. Because I, if we're tasting anything, if you start with a punch in the mouth, everything after that gets kind of messed up. Yeah. So let's end with the punch in the mouth. Okay, we got two whiskeys sent to us by the magnificent bastard Clint Mann. Are you ready? Yeah. Clint Mann! Go ahead. You magnificent bastard! Yeah. All right. So we already reviewed the Hickory Rocktown Arkansas whiskey okay. ages ago. Sure. But this is a part of their series called the uh, fl not flavored, but anyway, it's a special series it's, that Rocktown is it's doing. The flavored grains. There you go. Flavored grain series. Flavored grain series. Peated malt. Peated malt. Yeah. Bur peated malt bourbon. So it's technically 82% uh, corn, but the part of the grain that's not corn is a peated part of it is a peated malt. Okay. So imagine if we made a corn whiskey where part of it had the peated Maris Otter that we had down there. Sure. Right? Instead of wheat or, or rye. Yeah. This is only barley and corn. Yeah, yeah. Only barley and corn. And part of that barley is peated. And that, I find that really exciting. Ooh. I think mean, Rocktown, I don't know what, it, I can't remember what it tastes like, but I love how creative they're getting. Yeah. And how interesting they're getting and how they're trying cool shit. Yeah, yeah, so. Well done, Arkansas. A the really, nose is great. A nice, rich caramel and caramel and uh, oakiness, like a sweet, yes. sweetened oakiness. Wow, the peatiness, man. I wish we weren't we weren't so close to a scotch. A scotch, yeah. Because that the, compared to it's a peaty, in there. Compared to a peaty scotch, um, I'm like seven minutes away from that. I haven't found the peatiness yet. I'm gonna let this settle. This is only 12 year, 12 months old. It's one year old, and the nose Shut up. does not smell you mean, young and sour, this, sour or piney. This is one year. One year, that is the nose on this is magnificent for one year. I wonder how big the barrels are. This is maybe one of the wow. most subtle young bourbons I've ever smelled. Let me tell you this. This I all, all of a sudden got very excited about this being. A one-year-old whiskey because of our own personal circumstances. Right, because it's one of the most frustrating things about being um, in the whiskey industry is at any given time oh, you are bitch. years away from having something to offer people. We don't have it nearly as bad here in the South as they do in you know the northern part of the country or in other other countries entirely, but still. Only being a year away from offering something that, at least on the nose, is this nice? That's a 46% whiskey. Phil right? Brandon, head distiller at Rocktown. Phil Brandon, if I made anything even close to this, I would die a proud man. Like, this is so good. This is... This may have just jumped into the category of one of my favorite bourbons. Really? Because of that peated malt. Right. Keeps it from being pure sweet corn. Right. This is... I like this a lot. Here, well, did you, did you say one of your favorite of all time? Top 10. Top, top 10. Top 10. Top 10. Immediately. Immediately top 10. Wow. Now, I've not lived with it, but this is top 10. It's a tentative top 10. For a bourbon. Tentative top 10. For, For yes, a bourbon. Yeah, we're talking about bourbon here. But there's molasses yeah. in here. There's uh, pipe tobacco. There's leather, but it's not raw, new leather. It's old, rich, oiled leather. And it's one of these whiskeys that the first moment unfolds uh, into some cinnamon for me. Slightly coffeed. Some cinnamon. The finish is a little bit of a tiny bit of barrel bitter. The molasses, you're right, is there. The honey is there. Damn, dude. So you say we've had Rock Town before. The hickory smoked one. I don't remember adoring. I don't I don't remember either. I, I don't remember really loving that hickory one either. It's in here, so I don't want to open this one right. all over because I want to keep this let's one find, Let's find that. But we've got four more bourbons to drink. So here's just their normal bourbon. Let's do that. I don't want to open the hickory yet. Okay. Because I'm confident I have it somewhere. Miserly. Miserly. Yeah, you can see the bourbon in the, you can see their distillery character in this bourbon too, but it's sweeter and it ends kind of clingy sweet. 
this thing. It ends sugar, but this They're, is unbelievable. The regular bourbon is much more simple. If they don't submit that to awards things and win double gold every damn time, I'm going to be blown away. You have a raging hard on for this. I did not expect to fall in love with an Arkansas bourbon. <laughs> Let me just put it out there. This is catching me off guard. <laughs> uh, and I think because it surprised me, I'm... I'm being that much more excited about it. Yeah. Because I was ready Your for this to be Your like, expectations were so low. Yeah, and then I tasted it and I went, son of a bitch. <laughs> that is, <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, it's it's uh, very nicely balanced. Uh, a lot of complexity. I like that. It's not weird complexity, though. It, though it's comfortable complexity. It's, it's notes that you want to find in American whiskeys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, rinse out your glass. We're moving to... Oh, we're not adding water? We're at, No, because we've got too many to do. We're moving to a whiskey distillery in Illinois. You know, my mom grew up partially in Chicago. Oh, yeah? Is that how she got into the mob? Yeah. Don't cross her. She doesn't like to talk about those years. Don't cross her. She was one of the mob's most effective hit hinch women. <laughs> <laughs> this is op Opiden? What would you call this? Opiden? Yeah. It's a name of a whole, there's o a whole thing. Opie Dan. Opie Dan. This is called Opie Dan. That is correct pronunciation. Opie Dan. I'll tell you, I'm not a big fan of the cap, but overall, I think this is a beautiful bottle design. This is from Bill Fullerton. <laughs> Bill Fullerton, you may give us it. Opie Dan. Ooh, there's a, there's a weird nutty Waxy funk to that nose. Well, hold don't, don't, I don't know if I would throw out weird. I would say waxy, nutty, yes. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of into it. So they're doing Solera casking, which is when you never empty a barrel all the way. So you take, you have all these barrels. Yeah. You empty them, you know, three fourths of the way. Right. And you backfill them with younger barrels. Right. And then you backfill those, and then you backfill those, and then you add some new make to it. And every time you bottle, you're bottling from the oldest range of barrels and then backfilling. So eventually you have a mix of molecules in there that could be from the very first run you ever put into that barrel mixed with stuff that's only the youngest. And it just, it helps keep this mixed blended flavor profile really strong. Infinity barrel. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an infinity barrel. Yeah. Um, and they have a what, five grain if mash If you don't bill. know what an infinity bottle is, then... This episode will walk you through it. I love the nose on this. Wheeling, Illinois. They have a, a five grain mash bill, they say, of corn malted rye, chocolate malted rye, special uh, bee, and two row barley. Three different wood types American oak, French oak, and Oloroso sherry. The French and Oloroso are never emptied completely. Man, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this, and I really like this. Yeah. This is dark on the nose, Waxy. dark and rich. I, I'm tasting it now. Waxy, nutty, cherry, a little bit of oakiness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, we got winners. We do. We got winners on this round. Mm -hmm. This is good stuff. Ooh, and um, a little cinnamon now. Yeah. A little sweet, sugary cinnamon. Man, right on the both front of end. these right first, the, too. Right on the front end. I could just keep at the house and live with. Obscure whiskey. Well done. The competition is getting fierce. It is getting fierce. Fierce. You can't just show up and make something reasonably good. You got to compete. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's coffee. This is headed towards that note that you and Chad could always recognize and really love, and like Deer Hammer and Westland, Westland and yeah, yeah, yeah. so on. Yeah, I agree. All right, Bill no. Ford, well done. It's de definitely there. Okay, we move on to William Michael McGraw. William Michael McGraw from the Oregon. That's right. Or you can drink the rest of that. That's how you pronounce it. Oregon. 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 Or Ori. Oregon. 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 We got that. Oregon. We got William Michael McGraw, you magnificent. Master. So this is McMinnum's. McMinimins. McMinimins. McMinimins Billy Whiskey. You haven't traveled enough, evidently, to have heard of McMinimins. Because McMinimins I owns... haven't traveled enough to heard of Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> McMinimins owns the Northwest, basically. Okay. They are a chain of pubs, restaurants, 
and they specialize in going fully localized into their environment. So unlike Chili's, where it's like one Chili's is all Chili's, right. McMinimins, uh, which I think started in Portland, but I could be wrong about that. Right. They did like in Portland, they bought a school, yeah. like an elementary school. So we'll speak quick, quickly. Speaking of giant national franchises just doing things identically anywhere, regardless of location, I took my kids to IHOP and then Zilker Park. Yeah. And the IHOP, it's real, it's, you know, it's not ancient. Mm -hmm. The IHOP had a window down the middle of the restaurant for a smoking section. Oh, yeah. In Austin. Oh, yeah. That's not a thing in Austin. Yeah. So they just have this big wall with a window. And they've never removed it. It's like, yeah, yeah you, you're in a city that doesn't oh, need that. Drink that, rinse it. So you were saying something. So what I was saying was, McMinimins, like, for example, in Portland bought a school. Like, like imagine if someone bought my like elementary school, yeah. and then they converted it into a destination bar, movie theater, restaurant. That's a they good knocked idea. down g the gym walls or something like that became a movie theater, yeah. right? And then like classrooms walls got knocked down and it became a pub over here. Yeah, yeah. And you still walk into the front doors like a school. And it's, it's just so cool. And then in other towns they built brew pubs. They started distilling. They make their own beers. Yeah. McMinimins has become a thing. Now this one is. Uh, Billy, and they're not actually distilling it at the McMinimins distillery. Okay. Well, they have a distillery. This one, I think, is being done, and it's three years old in American Oak. Yep, Cornelius Pass Roadhouse Distillery, um, Hillsboro, Oregon. Right. Small batch. Now, so here, here's a super cool thing. They kept it in Oregon. Yeah, Cornelius is making a, what is that bird? That's a big bird. That's not a buzzard. <laughs> That's huge, though. That's like a... Is that a, it's just all a black. raven? It's a big ass raven. That's massive. That's a raven that'll kill your dog. Yeah, no kidding. It's an eagle raven. <gasps> New spirit animal. <laughs> we saw uh, it. This so, is like a raven as big as a freaking eagle. It's yeah, it was <laughs> very rigid. large. Okay, so uh, they are distilling on an old school cognac still, which is this massive alembic copper type thing. So right? cogn cognac is, for those that don't know, because I totally know, I got these things like locked down. Oh, I got like a shit. steel trap. But for other people who don't care to remember, cognac is what? <laughs> <laughs> cognac, let me look at the legal definition of cognac. Because I know it's a brandy, but, right? Wow. Um, but I'm making sure that my brain's not going sideways after all the things that we've tried. Yes, okay. Cognac is a brandy named after the cognac region of France. Thank God that's what I remembered. <laughs> but I was about to say something with like, yeah, so it's from the cognac region. And then be I'm getting filleted by people because I've been drinking too much whiskey. On the nose, you know the, the hard coffee candy mm -hmm. we get at Trattoria Tred Lucena? It's a coffee flavored candy on the nose. Oh yeah. There's some funk to this too. There's oh, that there new there is. coffee flavored candy. And then, wow, man, that's really interesting on the nose. It's a wheat heavy mash bill, evidently. It's 43. And they put it in lightly toasted barrels. 43.5%. I wonder which barrels they're using because. And then I get, um, it's not a cherry. Is it a cranberry? What is this? This berry note. You know what? Their mash bill must be weird because they aren't calling it anything but a, a whiskey. Yeah. So that means it's not corn heavy. It can't be rye heavy, it can't be malt heavy, because otherwise it would have been one of those things. You know, I'm blowing out my nose, just, it's just getting annihilated with just uh, an overdose of smells, trying to figure out what this sweet- Oh, the taste is nice. What the sweet berry note is. The taste is, um, it's like- It's uh, gingery. Gingery? Um, Maybe? Taste, 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 not the nose. Nose, hold on a ballgame. Vanilla, I got. Vanilla and- Well, maybe not, because- have, have you ever baked is a gingerbread a, cookie? Is it a toffee? They say gingerbread cookie. I don't know if I'm buying gingerbread cookie. I could but say I, do, I get what you mean by that dark molassesy gingery. Man. But that sour back, it's 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 not doing it for me. So the first three fourths of this on the taste, I really like, and then it falls off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Totally falls off a cliff. The finish is not existent. It's like you're going somewhere. You're excited. You just driving it home, you get these amazing flavors, just like bop, 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 bop flavors, and then you don't get that satisfaction of the finish. Yeah, that's exactly it. Aftertaste is almost negligible. Let's add a little water just to see if that changes this one. We didn't do it to the others, but this one I feel like maybe it'll help it. 
I'm getting a little bit more. It's a little bit more lively on the nose the now. Taste just disappeared. It let go. It let go of some of the oils on the nose. It's no, no, on the nose, on the nose. You already tasted. It. You, you've ruined, tainted your palate. It it accented that slightly sour note that I don't like. Full of taint. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward pause. <laughs> All right, William. Yeah, no, don't do water. Don't do water. Water just nah. man. It was every. They found everything. this magical little window of interesting flavors. Mm -hmm. We put drops in there. The when we ruined it, fell apart. Yeah, entirely fell apart there. All right, is that it? No, I got one more. It's gonna ruin your life. Woo! You ready? Okay. Oh yeah, the ruin the life one that I saved for this the... is thanks to Jason Busey. So when wait, Jason wait, thanks to Jason. Busey? Yeah, Jason Busey dropped this off. He said, uh, I don't know if you're gonna want to drink this one. But I thought it would be funny if you did. It's Corsair. Yeah, Corsair makes good stuff. Right? Yeah. Old Punk. Old. It is. Okay. Pumpkin Spice Flavored Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> you know the whole rage of pumpkin spice that takes over the world around yeah, the holidays? I have my hot yoga class right after this. Yes. And then I suddenly feel the urge to get on Pinterest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here you go, Corsair. Okay. Making a pumpkin spice spirit. <laughs> hmm. Whoa, that smells like pumpkin spice. <laughs> less, less of the sweet, sugary pumpkin spice that you usually get. Yeah. And more just the pumpkin-y. The actual pumpkin-y note on the nose. Yeah, it smells more like pumpkin bread. Okay. Or pumpkin pie. Pumpkin oh, bread. yeah, pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie is actually what I was thinking of. Smells like pumpkin pie. Yeah, but you know you get like a pumpkin spice anything kind of drink. It's always more spice than pumpkin. It's always more sugar than pumpkin. Yeah, this is more pumpkin like pumpkin pie. Yeah. Like a real creamy pumpkin pie. Yeah. Whoa! Tastes like it needs whipped cream on top. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <coughs> oh, so this, just this. Hot cinnamon immediately attacks the back of your throat. Hot cinnamon immediately attacks the back of your throat. And then you're left with, man, I'm left with cinnamon is the lingering flavor for me. Yeah. Jason, you bastard. You. <laughs> Jason Busey, you magnificent <laughs> bastard. All right, I can't end on that. No. But really? See, now, aren't you glad I saved this for last? Because that would have totally ruined everything. I still have this hot cinnamon, with a little bit of a, a thread of pumpkin hair floating on top of the on top of the palate. I'm going back for more. Yeah, right, here's I'm, the fighting, stealing, and drinking. You fight me, fight for a friend. If you steal, may I steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may you drink, <laughs> you drink with, with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.